What's up, everybody? It's your pal Billy with Altcoin Buzz. Bitcoin, $10,000 up 3.7% today. The entire crypto market cap is $276 billion. Bitcoin has $179 billion of that. Sorry I've been gone for the last few days. I am in the middle of moving right now. So for these next few weeks while I get settled in, I might be kind of in and out. But I promise you, uh, you're going to keep hearing my voice. And uh, once I do get settled in, we're going to keep it consistent going forward. Today I want to talk about China, I want to talk a little bit about geopolitics and how it um, is relevant to Bitcoin and its price, okay? We all know that China had the infamous ban of Bitcoin a few years back, but sometimes with China, you need to kind of not exactly pay attention to what they say, but look what they're doing. It is my current opinion that the only reason we don't see Bitcoin currently trading around $20,000, $30,000 is because of this China ban. And to me, it looks like China is starting to soften up just a little bit on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. The big one, and there's several big ones, we're gonna call it, cover them all, but the big one is the Bank of China has recently released the infographic to raise Bitcoin awareness. Now I'm sure you've heard about this, but I wanna dive into it deep, okay? So China recently put out an infograph that basically, if you kind of look at it overall, was a net positive on their stance on Bitcoin, okay? Now, they're not necessarily saying it's a currency at all, in fact. They're not saying that one bit, but they are telling their uh, citizens and users of China's bank how exactly it has value. So this from Forbes.com right here, China could be about to throw its weight behind Bitcoin. Wow, cross your fingers. Uh, that would be incredible if that happened, guys. We're gonna talk more about what I think that would mean for Bitcoin here soon but now the state-owned bank of china the world's fourth biggest bank by assets has posted a pro bitcoin infographic on its website explaining the history of bitcoin and how cryptocurrencies work shortly after bitcoin was legalized legally recognized by a chinese court finding the cryptocurrency should be considered digital property okay so this infographic like it said there comes a few weeks after that chinese court or really just a week and a half i think after that chinese court did indeed declare Bitcoin as legal digital property, okay? It means it's legal in China to own it. They just don't want you trading it. They don't want you using um, uh, it as currency, right? So what I think is going to happen in the future, and keep in mind, this is just speculation. I believe that we are going to see the Chinese government, the banks in China create their own stable coin, their own regulated exchange, that would allow their citizens to not miss out on this party, okay? China's government, although maybe they are a little authoritarian, a little is maybe an understatement, they're, you know, a lot of people consider them authoritarian. Despite that, they're not going to want their population to miss out on this party, okay? A lot of people are starting to know and understand and see where Bitcoin is going. Okay, this is from the Huawei CEO. Why wait for Facebook? China can issue its own Libra. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to see China issue its own stable coin. And when that happens, I think we're going to see China create its own um, state-backed exchanges that allow Bitcoin and maybe a select few other cryptocurrencies that they have their eyes on and allow citizens to use that stable coin as an on-ramp and off-ramp to buy Bitcoin. That way they can have their eyes on it and they can have control over who's coming in and out of the monetary system. We all know about the trade war with the United States. A lot of sanctions are probably going to be coming China's way. And as China grows bigger and powerful and more strong, they're probably not going to just stand down to these sanctions, okay? Bitcoin has been proven as a way that the United States government at least believes um, can be, in their own eyes, a dangerous way for some of these countries to bypass these sanctions, okay? We saw Venezuela recently turn airport taxes into Bitcoin to avoid sanctions, all right? There's concerns over Iran and Russia using Bitcoin to avoid sanctions. Well, China's not exactly ignoring Bitcoin, I can tell you that. Meanwhile, all this is happening in what appears to be the beginnings of a bull run, all right? Several different predictions being thrown out there the last few months. This one from Cointelegraph.com. Crypto analyst says Bitcoin price could hit $100,000 during the next bull run, all right? He wasn't the only one. We all know Tim Draper's uh, Bitcoin prediction. 
where he stands by his 250,000 prediction and he's telling everybody to buy the rebound. I believe that was by 2022, if I remember right. And then the big one, the one everyone's been talking about recently, Pantera Capital CEO believes Bitcoin could reach $356,000 in a couple of years. That's an oddly spe specific number right there, okay? He's got his own metrics for how he's reading the charts. All right, so Pantera Capital founder Dan Moorhead discusses how Bitcoin could hit $42,000 by the end of 2019 and even has the potential to reach $356,000 within a couple of years. Moorhead delivered his comments on an episode of the Unchained podcast on July 23rd. Moorhead specifically said that he predicts Bitcoin will hit $42,000 by the end of the year and climb to $356,000 by 2022. Moorhead claimed that this would be consistent with the top cryptocurrency's logarithmic growth chart. So more specifically, this is exactly what he said. Graph the price of Bitcoin logarithmically, okay? Its trend is going to grow at 235% compound annual growth rate, and that puts Bitcoin at $42,000 at the end of 2019. And I know this sounds crazy, but we're essentially halfway back there. I think it's a good shot that by the end of the year, we hit that. And if you just extrapolate that line out for another year, it's $122,000 per Bitcoin, and then one more year, $356,000. Wow. Keep in mind, everybody, we're already at $10,000, while one of the nation, or sorry, one of the world's biggest economic powerhouses is currently sitting on the sidelines. All right, this graph right here represents China's GDP and its growth year after year ever since 2009. Say 2009. $5 trillion, 2018, $13 trillion was China's GDP. All right, people have money to spend over there. All right, there is hundreds of billions of disposable income, disposable capital waiting on the sidelines and there is a lot of interest in China with Bitcoin. Now, I know that people in China are still finding ways to buy Bitcoin, I know that, but I'm talking the masses here. I'm talking the general public and my prediction is that sometime in the next two years, you're going to see China not only soften up on Bitcoin, but allow their, their uh, citizens, almost called them clients, <laughs> allow their citizens to start purchasing Bitcoin after they've created their own version of Facebook's Libra coin. Okay. Now, pretty wild prediction there. I'm not saying I'm guaranteeing it to happen, but if this does happen, I would not be surprised if we see some of these predictions, okay, for the next bull market happen as a result of this major catalyst if it happens, okay? And despite those geopolitics, despite what the United States government feels about Bitcoin, despite how the Chinese government feels about Bitcoin, despite how the European Union feels about Bitcoin, Bitcoin halvening is still counting down, all right? It's in place. There's nothing anyone can do to stop that. 292 days, three hours, 59 minutes away from the next block reward halvening that will decrease the reward size from 12.5 to 6.25 Bitcoins, all right? We all know what's happened in the past with that. In my opinion, there's a storm on the horizon, okay? There's going to be a lot of geopolitical conflict that is going to help make this storm stronger. And we are about to see some rocket fuel for this ship. When the feds do their first interest rates cut since 2008, and they're not the only ones that are having some financial uh, volatility, okay? How negative interest rates helped turn the Deutsche Bank into a disaster, all right? Guys, what negative re interest rates mean is that these nations are basically defaulting on their sovereign loans, all right? These types of practices can't go on forever, folks. What's going to happen as more and more people realize that? What's going to happen to Bitcoin's price as more and more people realize that? There's too many storms on the horizon right now to ignore Bitcoin. I'm holding. I'm buying every chance I get. If you've been enjoying these episodes, please subscribe to Altcoin Buzz. Ring that bell. Like this video. Share it on Twitter. And check us out on Instagram. Let me know in the comments section what you thought about today's episode. Which one of these predictions do you think is going to come true? 
Are we going to hit $100,000 during this next bull run? Okay, Tim Draper's predicting $250,000. What do you think? And then Pantera Capital, $356,000 by 2022. Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. Until next time, everybody, peace. Thank you.